Okay, just a day ago I made a tutorial on creating low polygon trees and I figured I'd follow it up with a really quick and down and dirty way to create shadows for your trees that are faked. Um, if your engine doesn't support uh, dynamic shadows, if you don't really feel like messing with light maps and all that, or you just need a few shadows here and there at a low expense, then this faking method here works pretty well for me. So basically a few things here is I have this uh, low poly tree here, kind of just centered on my world as an example. It's just my low poly game, uh, game environment tree. Um, one of the first things we want to do is we want to go over to your view and the viewport menu here and go to camera settings and make sure resolution gate is turned on. Okay. You'll notice the gate actually popped up around it, and I already had a few things set up I'm going to explain here. Um, we see that it's nice and squared, this uh, resolution gate, and that it says 512 by 512 in it, okay? All right. Well, the reason that it's all squared off nice and representative of the shape of the texture is I went into view, and I went into camera settings, and I, s I lost it, and I set this to fill. Normally, it's set to horizontal, vertical, normally horizontal. I just set it to fill and that basically fills that with the exact kind of representation of the texture space. Now we see the 512 by 512 up here and that's uh, already been set up in, in the render settings here. I'm going to go into the render settings. We're just using the Maya software renderer which is fine and in the common attributes you'll see a lot of things to scroll down. What we're uh, interested in here are renderable cameras. We want to make sure since we're in the perspective viewport that we're rendering the perspective camera. We're rendering through that camera. We want to make sure alpha channel mask is turned on. Um, for this technique, really, all we're going to use is the alpha channel. We're not even using the color information on it. And uh, we want to go down here. And normally, this is set to like 320 or 640 or something like that. And we're going to go in here and just manually type in what texture size we want. Um, you could do a 256 or 128. It doesn't matter. For this example, I'm doing a 512 by 512. And everything else is fine. We just wanted to change those things in this tab. We'll go over to the Maya software tab and you just basically want to make sure you're at least at production quality. You can go up to even a higher quality if you like, but at least production. And then we can close this tab out. Um, and that's just to make sure you're getting the most pixels for your buck there on the production quality. So basically we have to look at this now like this is our shadow. Imagine this if this was, um, well we actually don't even have to really imagine it. We can go color, apply color, options. And we'll just take this top slider and we'll make it black. And there we go. Now you can look at your tree as if it was a shadow. And this is basically what your texture is going to look like. So just try to fill it in. Um, you, can, you can make the, uh, let me hide the grid here real quick. Show and then uncheck grid. And you can shorten the time of day on it too by kind of decreasing the length of the trunk by kind of going under it like this, completely from the side a little up like this um, and just try to fill your area and you can turn it to get the best shadow that you want I, and I really like that so I'm actually gonna stick with that and we're gonna hit render um, rendering in Maya software um, and we're in the color uh, information that you see rendering here right now we're not even gonna use any of that that's completely like moot point here we really are only interested in the alpha channel so it really doesn't matter how that looks at all. So up here, this is looking at color channel. This is to look at the alpha channel. So there we can see we have a beautiful shadow, alpha stenciled out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go File, Save Image. I'm going to navigate to my desktop, and I'm going to call this Beach Shadow. So I know this is the shadow to the beech tree. And you want to scroll down here until you find Targa, and make sure it's just saved out as a Targa. And we're going to hit Save. And then we're going to close this, and um, we'll actually go back, color, apply color, options, and we'll just color this back white so we can see our tree. We're going to go view, camera settings, and go no gate. So now we can just see our tree, and I can demonstrate what the shadow is going to look like with it. We're going to open up Photoshop, and I'm going to go file, open, and look for beach shadow TGA. And there it is. The color rendering looks awful, but we're only interested in this beautiful alpha channel here, which is this. So for the color channel, really, we're just going to make sure we're selected up here on the RGB, up here and here. And then we're going to go on our color picker here. And I already picked like a gray, grayish blue. 
Um, shadows, people think they're like black and gray, but really they have this tinge of kind of blue in them. And um, uh, it really adds something to it when you make it kind of with that bluish tinge to it, and you'll see it in the game engine. And basically what we want to do is just select that dark bluish like that, and I hit um, Alt Backspace, and that's Fill Foreground Color Shortcut in Photoshop, Alt Backspace. And basically that looks like a tree shadow. If we turn off the alpha channel, it just looks like a big bluish gray box, but you can see we have our shadow. So with that done, I'm going to go layer, flatten image, because I unflattened it there accidentally. I'm going to make sure I have my alpha channel, which I do, and that all these eyeballs are visible. I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm just going to overwrite beach shadow TGA. I'm going to make sure alpha channels are checked. I'm going to hit save. Yes, I want to replace it. I want to make sure it's 32 bits per pixel and not 2416. They don't support transparency, but the 32 bits per pixel is what supports this alpha channel for the for the uh, running in the game engine. So I'm going to hit OK, close that, go back to Maya. And with our tree here, I'm just going to go and go create polygon primitives plane. I'm going to kind of scale it up a little. I'm going to pull it out here. I'm going to grab some vertices and kind of elongate it a little. And um, like this. And then my overlay marking menus, if I was to hold down right mouse button and assign new material, they're not showing up in the video capture, but I see them on my screen. So I'm going to do this the long way and go Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And um, it shows up when windows pop up over, So, but it doesn't show my, my marking menus. Um, we're going to create a Lambert. There it is. Um, we're going to call it Beach Shadows. Hit Enter. And um, it put the one after it because I already have a, a texture or a tree or something in here called Beach Shadows. So I can just, I don't know, I can put a zero behind it or something. I want to map into the color channel here on this little checker. I'm going to click it. And I want to map a file texture. Click that. I'll close this out. I want to map it in on this little folder here. I'm going to navigate to my desktop. There it is. There's Beach Shadow TGA. I'm going to hit Open. I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to look for my beach shadow, which there it is. I held down right mouse button. I did graph network, and it basically lays out the graph here of this is the material, this is the texture, and this is its placement on the geometry. So basically, I'm just going to hold down middle mouse button over the material. Um, it can also be done up here. You're going to see a little plus symbol pop up next to my cursor, and then drag it onto the geometry. And there you go. Backward shadow. So there's a couple ways to do that. I could literally just turn my geometry around negative 180 degrees, or I could have flipped the UVs, but we just did it that way and to save time. So clearly it's not to scale, so we need to scale it up a little. And this tree is a little fatter, so I need to kind of scale that a little wider. And then the one thing you always want to make sure to do is always get the shadow lined up right on your trunk. See? Dead giveaway that that's not a real shadow to the tree. And just kind of line it up at the bottom like that. Keep scaling it if the trunk's not fat enough. But that is a pretty darn convincing shadow right there. Um, a little trick too, if you think the intensity is too intense on this, we can go back to our vert coloring, apply color options, and start messing with the alpha, vertex alpha in here, which most game engines support, and kind of hit that lower it down and look uh, how beautiful I mean it's, it's really convincing and beautiful or bump it back up a little go all the way back up or do what I like to do in most of my projects is just grab the outside vertices and kinda fade it out um, and it always looks kinda cool like it's you know fading naturally out or whatever um, let's, let's bring the intensity back um, the other thing you can do too is don't don't uh, hesitate to grab some of these vertices on it and kind of skew it for like, you know, time of day if the sun's really and, you know, like low in the sky. I um, mean, always remember to bring the trunk kind of back. And you can skew it like that. Um, and you can always add geometry to, I'm going to go edit mesh, insert edge loop. And with that edge loop selected, you can always uh, move it up and over. Ah, I'm getting lag because of the capture. Um, move it up and over terrain and stuff too. You know, 
feel free to do that. You can bend it and tweak it and twist it and add geometry to it. You can fade it, skew it. Um, but they work really great for, um, you know, just generic static fake shadows. Um, we could have also, when we initially rendered out our, um, uh, Maya's freaking out on me a little. You know, we could have rendered the tree like from above like this and just kind of got a, just a um, color, apply color, and we'll go down. We could have gotten like more of a underneath the tree type of shadow, but uh, you know, however you want to do it. It's convincing and it works. So anyway, that's the tutorial on creating uh, cheap fake shadows for low polygon trees.